Hello everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and Supplies, and today we're going to do something a little different than usual. I'm going to be sitting in my bed <laughs> painting for myself, but I thought I would record some blending for you. Although this painting on the left is a very stylistic type of design, I really wanted to blend the sky. It's got such beautiful pinks, oranges, and whites that I really wanted to see what it would look like if it was blended. So this is the painting I'm going to be working on. I had printed these larger versions of a photo reference, and so these don't come with a kit. This kit is actually from colormost.com. These are just some kits I had purchased for myself. You'll notice that I'd already put down the base layer for the colors that were going to be painted in the sky. Now, the first rule you need to remember when you're blending is lines schmines. <laughs> Basically, lines are just a guide and numbers are basically just a guide when we're going to blend. So the tools that I'm going to be using right now are my paintbrushes. I'm going to be using the Mini Mop blending brush, and I'm also going to be using my number two flat brush predominantly. This Mini Mop brush is perfect for working with clouds and grass or fur, something like that. The number two flat brush is the one you're going to see me use predominantly along these edges. Off screen, I'm going to have two of my water rinse cups with my brush cleaning system and my stainless steel mixing tools. I'm also going to be using a stay wet type of palette. The sponge stays wet once you put water on it and there's a almost like a palette paper on the top. Once you put the lid on, it will keep the acrylic paints wet for a long period of time, but you don't want to leave this in here too long because it will get mildewy after a while. And I'm also going to be using something called a floating medium. This is basically a retarder or an extender, as you've seen me use in the past. It's like a gel that allows me to continue to extend the working time of my acrylic paint so they don't dry out too fast when I'm working on my canvas. I'm also going to be using a paper towel. This will keep excess water off of my paintbrush, but it also helps me kind of clean in between while I'm working on my paint colors. It'll help me keep too much light color or too much dark color off my brush because I don't rinse in between the colors, and you'll see that in a minute. So I have my colors ready on my palette, and I have a little bit of that floating medium up at the top. One tip to remember when you're using a retarder, an extender, a floating medium, that kind of thing, is that you don't want to use too much. It will dilute your paints. You will get more transparent paints. So I advise you not to use too much of this extender. Okay, so let's talk about what I'm doing here. You notice that I picked up the white and a little bit of floating medium, and I went ahead and put that down on the line of what I call demarcation between the two colors. Then I went and picked up the pink and I'm really not cleaning my brush in the rinse cup. I'm just wiping off on the paper towel if I get too much. I'm using very light strokes with this paintbrush and I'm just softly going over those two colors to meld them together. And I'm getting a very soft transition between the two. I had a little drop of water on there as well, and I didn't mention that sooner, but here I'm going to mix those two colors together so that I can get a very soft transition, and I'm putting it right in the middle. So when I do that, it gives me that middle gradient. Now I'm picking up just the pink, and I'm going to take it down into the darker part of that section. Then without cleaning my brush, moving it back up into the top, I'm going to mix the two together a little bit more, go over where they both touch, and just lightly go back and forth. And you see again, it's kind of a sweeping motion with my paintbrush. You have to remember to just breathe and relax. You guys, it's just paint, and it's acrylic paint, so it's very forgiving. While it's wet, you can really just move it around and you can work with it. And the fact that we have this extender down or this floating medium means we've got a little extra time for this to stay wet. Now you see how soft it, it's already starting to look? Now if I need this white to go a little more bright up into that section, 
I'm just gonna add a little more white to it. I've picked up some floating medium here and I'm just moving it around. I'm going in with that mix of the two colors and blending it off softly until it just starts to float into the background of that white. You see how effortless this is? And it's so almost cathartic, it's so zen. I love blending things like the sky because you can just get into a zone with it. Allow it to put you into a meditative state. Let's work on this cloud and make it look a little fluffier and a little less obvious. I took some of the floating medium with some white and I'm just gonna go around the edges with that. I'm gonna pick up some of that pink and add it in there just to get a nice mixture of those two colors together. And basically I'm putting on almost like a wash. I will pick up my 1 8 inch mini mop brush from my blending set. And this is a really good opportunity to use that. On the edges of this cloud, I'm gonna go in and make just circular motions to start blending out the line where the white and that beautiful coral color or salmon color meet. And this is just gonna tone down that line. And you see how it starts to just fade out that really harsh line between those two colors. I'm not picking up any floating medium because I do want this to be a little more opaque to cover up those harsh lines. So here I want to make sure that I am blurring out that pink outline. I don't want it to look like a big blob of cloud in the sky. I want this to really blur this cloud. And so by doing this extra layer of white, you'll still see this cloud, but you're not gonna see a, what I would call a blob of a cloud. I definitely want this particular area to be more muted than some of the other sections. Now notice how this little blending brush really just works perfectly for blurring that cloud and getting rid of some of those super harsh lines on the edges. You'll notice I am taking my brush to the paper towel and I'm wiping off the colors. So if I have let's say too much pink and I need more white, I just wipe off what I have on my brush and I pick up more white. And then if I have too much white and I wanna go into a little bit more of that pink area, I'll wipe off the white and pick up more pink, but I don't wash in between. So I'm gonna to continue to work in this same fashion until this looks exactly like what I want it to look like. And you guys do the same thing. It's very hard for me to instruct you on what you want your particular project to look like. But I just worked on this until I achieved what I wanted my end result to look like. And you guys are going to make that decision for yourself on what you want your end result to look like on your project. I want to make sure I mention that I have been cleaning my paintbrush periodically to make sure that it is not collecting acrylic paint and drying into the ferrule of my brush. I have not shown you that part, but it's really important that once you feel like that paint is accumulating, that you do rinse and scrub your brush really well. Make sure that it doesn't have any excess water. It doesn't matter which brush you're using. Just make sure that you're doing that periodically.
on this section, I'm basically doing exactly what I did with the cloud. I did want this to be a little more of a vivid pop, but this was kind of a random area in the sky. But you know how sometimes you'll be driving down the road and you'll look at the sunset and you'll see this one little area that is just this bright pop of gorgeous color. So I wanted to make it look like that. So I took these little round blobs, let's use that, you know, professional term again, and you know how a sunset will have streaks across the sky. That's what this is ultimately going to look like. Remember, lines, schmines, okay? They're just guides. Yes, this is a paint by number, but you are the artist here. So take creative license by making it uniquely yours. So let's get back to what I'm doing here. I'm going back in with my number two flat brush again, and I'm going to just use some of that floating medium and the white and the colors that I have kind of mixed up on my palette. And I'm just gonna lightly sweep back and forth over these edges to blend them out into that white sky. Right now, I have a lot of the floating medium mixed in with this white, and so it's going to just give me that wash of color. So when I go over this section, it's not gonna be as opaque as what it would normally be. I'm also picking up the original girly pink color and mixing it with the white. This section is gonna be no different than what I did in the very beginning on the left side of this painting. Now let's talk about what you do when you get into an area that has multiple colors. First, I'm gonna go ahead and put down floating medium and white around the edges. Then I'm gonna go in with that orange mixed with a little floating medium. On my palette, I'll mix those two together. And like I've done before, I'll put that right over the edge where those two meet. I'll continue to blend those out just like I've done the other areas where there are only two colors. Now that I'm getting into the section where I need to start adding that coral pink, I've added some of that to my palette along with some more floating medium. This is when I'm gonna start incorporating those three colors together. The only real difference between working with two, three, or four colors or even more is that you're gonna be picking up multiple colors at different times, depending on which section you're working on. You may notice I'll be cleaning my brush off a little more often on that paper towel because I'll be going from the white to the pink to the orange and back and forth. And so to keep the colors separated to some degree, I'll just wipe my brush off on that paper towel a little more often than you've seen me doing before. 
because these colors work so beautifully when mixed together, it doesn't matter if they get blended into one another. So that is a really great thing in this particular situation. So now that I've blended some of the single pink and white color together, let's go back over here to this area where the pink meets the orange and the white a little bit. I'm going to pick up that orange and mix it into the pink and just blend it like I was doing earlier. While I've got those two colors together, I'm going to take those over to the right side where the pink and the orange meet as well. While I still have the pink and orange on my brush, I'm going to pick up that really deep reddish orange and start blending it into those colors. If I get too much of the reddish color, I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel and pick up some of the lighter orange and start blending the dark and the light orange together in that little section. And you can see how beautifully they started blending together. Now to soften the edges of that orange section, I'm going to wipe off my brush on that paper towel and pick up some of the floating medium with the pink and start just lightly sweeping over the outside edges into the background of that pink sky. And here I'm keeping all the colors that I had on my brush on there and I'm picking up the same colors and just doing the same thing over this dark orange section not cleaning the brush, not even wiping it off, and just sweeping over those harsh edges of that dark orange. And you see how beautiful and soft it becomes so quickly, but it just turned out so beautifully when I was done. And I know you're tired of listening to my voice, so I'm going to just turn on the pretty music and continue what I'm doing and let you watch the rest of me blending this sky until I'm done.
Now that I've completed all the blending, I wanted to go back and insert a before photo of what this project looked like. I did do a little bit of blending before I started this video, and I could have absolutely left this just the way it was. It's very stylistic. It matches the rest of this painting. But the reason I decided to blend this to begin with was I wanted the sky to be kind of off in the background in the final project because there's a lot going on in the rest of the image. So now we can take a look at how the blended sky looks in comparison. And I really love the fact that the colors stay just as vibrant, but they're softer in the way that they just blur out. And whenever I'm able to paint the rest of this project, the foreground will be the primary focus, but the sky will still be absolutely gorgeous. Thank you as always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Be sure to like, comment, and share this video.